It's not so long ago I was inside this building and uh, it looked nothing like what we're looking at today. I wasn't even sure that I believed them when they told me that the planetarium will be inaugurated before the end of the year. Some of them are in this room, and I think it's been heroic uh, what they've been able to achieve in a very short space of time. I was told that the funding for the foyer uh, delayed somewhat, and they only got it three weeks ago, and what you're seeing in the foyer was done in three weeks. I really think that uh, even before we start, we must give a special round of applause to those who are involved in putting it together. With all parties involved, that will include the Department of Education, the department I'm leading now, Department of Economic Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs, the Department of Science and Technology, and make this dream of completing the facility is realized. As we do that, ladies and gentlemen, we are sure of turning our dream of making Mangaung a city of stars and the city of roses to come true. We want to say thank you to um, a lot of our uh, other sponsors. As uh, the Chancellor already indicated, it's important for us to recognize them as well, because they have made it possible for us to get to this point. The Old Mutual Foundation, the Herman Altaver Trust, the Ledger Lindberg Trust, Windwell CSI, the Robex Group, and then of course our American partners, the American Museum of Natural History and the University of, of Michigan. We, we want to say thank you very much to all of you who are represented here today. We really appreciate that. And as you've heard, we still have lots to do, 15 million rands, to make sure that our kids are properly accommodated here when they visit the, uh, the facility. Uh, and we hope that uh, you'll pitch in whenever there's a chance uh, for you to make a contribution. No. Perhaps we should stop talking about the knowledge economy. Start talking about to the new economy that we're about to enter as the celestial economy. It seems as if our economic activity and general levels are shifting from terrestrial, terrestrial to celestial as the telescopes face up into the firmament, discover new suns and possibly new earths, we will have new colonies and will redefine colonialism for the future. Um, and hopefully, in the process, we will rediscover ourselves as humans and hopefully learn something special about ourselves that says that, after all, we are all human. On that note, I'd like to once again congratulate all of those who have made all forms of contributions, financial, 
human capital otherwise who have ensured that this special project becomes a reality. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Martin Radcliffe. I'm the Director of Professional Development for Skyscan. And we're the company that provided the technology that we're going to demonstrate for you for about 20 minutes. Uh, we have about eight hours of material to show you, but don't worry, we're going to keep it to 20 minutes. Um, now, over in the uh, western sky, uh, we have uh, the planet Venus. Uh, we have the planet Venus, and because this is a digital planetarium, uh, we're not restricted to showing what we can see from the Earth. Uh, but uh, first, I'm going to zoom up Venus and show you what this would look like. Well, thank you very much, Matty, for that wonderful introduction. And on behalf of the University of Michigan, I just want to extend our congratulations on this magnificent transformation of this former University of Michigan Observatory. It was our first observatory outside of our home base in Ann Arbor. And Michigan astronomers traveled for many decades here to South Africa to study the stars. And so I would say we are truly pleased that you now have a world-class facility here in, on Naval Hill uh, this, I know of no facility like this elsewhere in the world. We are pleased to see that we can still see the brick walls that University of Michigan astronomers looked at, and we can still see the dome around the inner dome that you can see uh, that uh, Michigan astronomers moved. Well, I think we are the first one of two cities in the world where een wildtuin om er totaal omring wordt door een stad. En dan, boom behalve dit, het ons nou ook die eerste digitale planetarium in Sub-Sahara, Afrika, wat ons nou vandaag hier geopend het, zoals is baie opgewonde. Het ding is een erge uh, unieke faciliteit in een baie, baie groot gebied van die, van die planeet. En die voordeel is ook, dit is centraal in Zuid-Afrika. Dit is erg in moeite werd voor die mensen om te reis. Hier is nog, Roefentuin uh, het natuurlijk baie dinge wat hy vir mense kan bied, maar hier is baie speciaal. 
en dit is sommer na by die N1 vir al die reisigers wat hier voorbij Bloefontein snel. Uh, working with the university is one of the best things of Punjab. Uh, uh, Skyscan is very involved with a number of universities around the world and we can all collaborate together. So now the University of Free State is joining a, a larger growing group around the world that can collaborate and we can bring uh, different kinds of astronomy content, biology content, uh, chemistry, all sorts of sciences onto the dome here. And working with the local university has been really great. There's some superb students that I've worked with. Uh, in geology, chemistry, astronomy, and it's going to be really great for the university. As we became to, again aware today, Bloemfontein can become and will now become the city of stars and roses. And I think you may have this rose in your backdrop at the moment, and it's really a privilege for us to add to the beautiful city of roses with something unique. You know, talking of astrotourism, it's a unique concept that hasn't been fully developed or fully been um, capitalized on in South Africa specifically and we believe we in Bloemfontein and the Free State can be in the forefront of achieving that to become the astro-tourism venue for the country.